And it looks like the very first message we have is actually a long one. Here we go, a long one. And this is called, How Do I Let Go of the Past? (laughs) And I, I do remember when I wrote this. Again, I was still working. And uh, and I had been working in the same place for nine years. So I had a past there. And there were employees that, you know, over the course of the nine years, there were business conflicts with um, and grievances were built up. And so what would happen is that I would go to work, you know, not wanting to experience grievances, you know, wanting to be spiritually good, (laughs) you know, because I'm still a new course student, so I want to be spiritually good. I want to have a perfect day, no grievances, right? Of course, I'm still judging myself all the way, but I think you all understand the mindset. So I would go to work wanting to have a spiritually good day where I didn't judge anyone, I didn't experience any grievances. And then somebody would walk into my office that I had a history with and they'd say something and it all came pouring back. (laughs) You know, I was like, oh, this is hopeless. You know, how do I let go of this past? (laughs) So so that's really what I was feeling um, when this question came about. Yeah, Dorothy is saying office politics do not compute with no grievances. Absolutely, they did not fit together. Um, So that's where the question comes from. So here's the question. I am realizing how much I hold on to the past, especially in some situations, and I want to learn to let it go. Letting go of the past seems really challenging. (laughs) I keep seeing the past in the faces that I come into contact with. Will you share some tips to help me get better at letting go of the past? Thank you in advance. (laughs) So I'm having faith I'm going to get the, the answer. Thank you in advance with love and deep appreciation. So... Um, That was my business letter to the Holy Spirit. I even had the thank you in advance in there, just like a business letter. So here's the answer that we get from the Holy Spirit. Letting go of the past seems difficult because you have an earthly memory. Don't think of letting go of the past as letting go of your memories. That is not realistic for you at this time. And I literally remember... When the Holy Spirit said that, it was as if if somebody took a burden off of my shoulders because I thought that's what I had to do. I thought I had to be like brainwashed that when everybody came into my office, it was literally like I had never met them before and that that's the complete experience that I had to have. And as I mentioned, I failed at that experience miserably because they'd walk in, they'd say something, I'd remember the whole past and, and, and I was what a loser. <laughs> Once again, I'm a loser. I blew it one more time. So it was really... Uh, hey, Jasmine, welcome home. <laughs> so Jasmine's saying, uh-uh, she's in the kitchen telling me that I'm not a loser. What a sweetheart, huh? <laughs> um, so it was really helpful when the Holy Spirit said to me that we're not talking about letting go of my earthly memory, that that's not even realistic for me at that time. I really felt relieved of a burden. So let's continue. Don't think of letting go of the past as letting go of your memories. That is not realistic for you at this time. Think of letting go of the past as releasing it from your present moment and therefore from your future. Now I had no idea what that meant, so that's why we have so many paragraphs here. (laughs) So the Holy Spirit goes on to explain. First of all, You feel guilty because you think you live too much in the past. You can easily let go of the guilt if you realize it is impossible for you to live in the past. Impossible. Now is always now. You can only live now. You are merely, oh sorry, you can only live now. If you are thinking of the past, you are not living in the past. You are merely reviewing the past now. 
So that was actually a very powerful shift for me because I did see myself as guilty for living in the past. That's what I saw. And the Holy Spirit saying, you can let go of that guilt because that's not happening. That's impossible. And again, talking to a logical person, as he spelled this out for me, I saw, ah, that is impossible. You're right. I'm not living in the past. It is always now. I'm merely thinking about the past now. And I was... Again, another burden was lifted off of my shoulders. I was instantly able to let go of that guilt for living in the past because I saw very clearly in an instant that that was impossible. I had never done it, and no matter how hard I try, I can never do it. (laughs) It's always now. So two burdens have been lifted off of my shoulders with this message so far. You can only live now. If you are thinking of the past, you are not living in the past. You are merely reviewing the past Now, the power in that is that you can choose a different reaction now than the one you may have selected in the past. You know, that's one one heck of a sentence. Reviewing the past isn't anything to feel guilty for. In fact, I can use it for the healing of my mind. If I find myself reviewing the past, the Holy Spirit says there's power in that. The power in that is that you can choose a different reaction now than the one you may have selected in the past. You are not stuck with your past reaction because it is not the past. It is now. Secondly, when you are reviewing the past in the present, Think about your memories as a diet. And of course, as a typical American woman, I am very skilled at dieting. (laughs) So now we're moving into an area of expertise as a symbol. (laughs) When you are reviewing the past in the present, think about your memories as a diet. We can call it a soul food diet, if you like. The diet that you select determines what you will grow into. The diet that you select determines what you will grow into. If you decide to feast on a diet of ego memories, you are building a future like your past. This is what the Course urges you to not do. This is what is meant by letting go of the past. However, you can select different memories as your diet and build a different future by reviewing those memories now. So notice I'm not even being asked to let go of my memories, which I've been told is something I really can't do. I'm just being taught to look at them like a diet and to realize that whatever I feast on, that's what I'm going to turn into. And of course, he's talking about within experience. So I have a choice. I have two different diets. I have these ego memories, these grievances, you know, and all these things from the past. Or what I also have are things that the Holy Spirit has been sharing with me. I literally have memories of messages the Holy Spirit has given me. I have memories of what I've read in the Course. I have memories of the stories that Peace Pilgrim shared with me through her book. I could choose to feast on those memories instead when I want to daydream while I'm driving or daydream while I'm snow blowing. I can literally pick what I want to daydream about. And that is a diet, and I will become that which I choose. So again, you can select different memories as your diet and build a different future by reviewing those memories now. Choose to remember the times that you have felt your closeness to me. Choose to remember the times that you were in your right mind. Choose to remember the helpful thoughts that I have shared with you. Choose your memories like you choose your music and your reading materials. Because I was already at this point successfully feeding myself only the Holy Spirit through my choice of entertainment. I was only listening to music that inspired me. In fact, I was pretty much on a Resta diet at this time, pure Resta diet for music. I was only reading A Course in Miracles or other books that the Holy Spirit guided me to, which were uh, similar to A Course in Miracles. 
you know, kind of companion books to A Course in Miracles. So I was already successfully doing that with my entertainment. So now the Holy Spirit's saying, do that with your daydreaming time. You know, do that with your memories as, as well. Consciously choose what you're going to daydream on. So choose your memories like you choose your music and your reading materials. Choose to feast on uplifting memories. Use your past to build you up and bring you closer to me. So again, this is really helpful because now, instead of letting go of, a, of thinking about the past, which seems to be impossible for me, I'm just, again, it's just a shift. The Holy Spirit is constantly shifting me. You notice that? I'm shifting from feeling like victim to what's in my mind to realizing I have a choice. And I would consciously do this. I would be out there snow blowing. And, you know, cause in Boston, you snow blow a lot <laughs> in the winter months. So I'd be out there snow blowing. I'd notice I started feasting on a grievance. And then I'd catch myself. And I'd say, oh, I'm feasting on a grievance again. And I would choose to put that aside and start thinking about the thought the Holy Spirit had given me that day or my workbook lesson or whatever. And I would just shift. And then I would walk along still snow blowing and daydreaming, but not feeling guilty for daydreaming, which I couldn't seem to stop. But I was actively using my daydreaming to build me up. Holy Spirit continues. Letting go of grievances is important. <laughs> I'm sure that you can see from what I have already shared that when you bring a past grievance into the present, you have another opportunity to let it go. Now, I had never, ever thought of this before. It's such a simple idea, but this I, it had never occurred to me that when I was thinking about a grievance, Instead of feeling guilty about thinking about the past, which had been my habit until now, <laughs> instead of feeling guilty about thinking about the grievance, that I could actually use that moment to choose to let it go. That had literally never occurred to me. Don't ask me why. It just hadn't. So this, again, was like, a, oh, wow, you know, <laughs> I can do that? You mean if I find myself thinking about a grievance, instead of feeling guilty about it, I can just use that moment to let the grievance go. It was, it was an incredible idea to me. Uh, very powerful once again. So I'm sure that you can see from what I have already shared that when you bring a past grievance into the present, you have another opportunity to let it go. However, do not think of the past as only the distant past. If a brother says something to you that does not seem to come from love, the moment he has said it, it is already in the past. You can choose again now. So what he's referring to is, of course, at this time, my first reaction to anything that I perceived as negative was negative. I mean, my first reaction was always the ego at this point, always. So if somebody came into my office and said something to me, my first reaction came from the ego. You know, I'd be angry at them, or I'd feel offended, or, or whatever. Um, and so the Holy Spirit is saying, the instant you notice that you do that, it's already the past. It's already over. Because then I would get caught up in feeling guilty for what I'm doing now, right? Now I'm screwing up again. Here was another situation to be the perfect little core student. <laughs> Somebody came into my office and said something rude, and now I'm falling for it. And I would go completely into the guilt thing then. So, you know, the Holy Spirit helped me to let go of the past, but when I'm screwing up now, you know, then that's a whole other story. The Holy Spirit's saying it's not a whole other story, Regina. It's not a whole other story. It may have happened a second ago in the past, but it's still in the past. And you can now review that and change your mind about it now. It's the same thing. There's no difference. It's the same thing. So I'm learning that I don't ever need to judge myself. All I need to do is choose again, and I always, always can. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> Even if I just totally blew it one second ago. <laughs> one second ago, I could have blow, you know, blown up and screamed at someone, which I didn't really do at work, but I have been known to do with my daughter. <laughs> One second ago, I could have totally lost it and blew up and screamed, but that's now in the past, and I can choose again now. I don't need to judge myself and pull myself down into guilt city. I mean, it's just a powerful, powerful idea. And remember, I was a very new course student then, so you can see how useful this one message really is. So if a brother says something to you that does not seem to come from love, the moment he has said it, it is already in the past. You can choose again now. 
the past occurs very rapidly, yet now is with you always. As you become skilled at letting go of the past immediately, you will find that you can be at peace always. Love the present moment. Cherish it as your opportunity to know yourself. You've heard the old saying about why the current moment is called the present. It is a gift, and it is a gift that is always with you, given you by your Father in love. Feel gratitude for the gift that is with you always. Treasure it. It has great value if you will see it as having value. It is your peace, and like your peace, it can never be taken away from you. What a gorgeous, gorgeous message, huh? No matter what I did a second ago, no matter how awful it seemed to be, (laughs) I don't need to judge it. I just need to choose again now because now is a new moment and it's a gift from God. So I'll let go of the mic and see if anybody has anything they want to share about that message.